So in this video, we're going to talk about five ways that you can opt out of static rendering in Next.js. Now, by static rendering, I mean pre-rendering pages at build time versus rendering them at request time, which is dynamic for every request. Now, Next.js by default tries to statically pre-render or generate as many pages as possible to just optimize our application. But sometimes we don't want this behavior and or we want to opt out of this behavior. And I'm going to share with you five different ways that you can opt out of this behavior. So let's jump into the code while we are talking about this. We're going to also see them in code in action so we understand them better. Just a high level overview of our application. This is just a clone of our next TS starter template. I have a video on the channel where I talk about how I set up my Next.js apps. I'm going to include a link in the description. This is just a clone of that. We have just one single page here that we're going to be working on. And if I go to the application, it's just rendering the date and time of now. So we are calling this get date time function up here. Right now, we are not fetching anything. We are simulating a fetch of a resource that we're fetching and then showing it up here. But to just show if this page is a static or if it is dynamic, um, depending on if you're seeing the same time, no matter how many times we request. So it's a statically cached versus dynamically just re-rendered or rendered every time at request time. I'm just using the date to demonstrate this point. And then we are showing it down here. Now to see this in action, if I go ahead and refresh the page, even though I mentioned that Next.js defaults to static generation, you see this time is changing every time I'm refreshing. Well, this has to do with us running the local development server, with, which is going to refresh or re-render this data every time. So if I go ahead and actually build the project by running pmpm build, and then starting the production server by running pmpm start instead of pmpm dev, if I now go ahead and refresh the page, no matter how many times we refresh the page, this time that was captured at build time when Next.js was statically generating this page would remain the same and we're not going to get a new date. So the difference here is just running local development. So if you're running local development and you don't see this static behavior in action, you have to just build the project and run it with pmpm start to run the production server that just serves up the build um, output instead of the development server so let's just go back to our pmpm dev where we can see the changes with this difference in mind going back to our notes the first way to opt out of this static default behavior is to use the cache and or the revalidate option of the fetch function. So assuming that I was fetching really some resources here, what I can do is I can extend this uh, fetch function and pass a cache option to it and say no store, which is going to opt out of the default cache behavior for our fetch functions. And this time it's not going to store the result of our data. Now you can also pass in a revalidate function which is available on the next object. So you can pass in a next object and on, inside of it you have this revalidate that you can pass into zero. Now this is often used with ISR or incremental static regeneration where you have static pages but you want to regenerate them after specific time intervals. For example, after every minute, after every 60 minutes, that's when you would pass in a positive number to this revalidate where Next.js is going to revalidate this specific function or cache and regenerate these pages. Now, if you set the revalidate to zero, it's going to make sure that the result of this fetch function is never cached. So it has the same effect as you pass this cache no store. So these are your first two options when it comes to opting out of the static behavior or static generation in Next.js. But what if we are not using the fetch functions? Imagine that we are running a database query and we are using a database client to create a connection to our database and query our database and we're not using fetch in that instance to be able to pass this options to it. That's where route config or segment config options come into place 
You can also search it in the documentation. There are different segment config that you can pass into your layouts and pages and routes. But the two that we are interested here is one that you can export a dynamic constant or segment option. So you can go export const dynamic and set this to force dynamic. This is going to make sure that this page is always rendered at request time dynamically. Now, another option that we can also export is a const called revalidate. And again, we can pass the zero to this, which is going to have the same effect of opting this page out of static generation and make this page dynamic. Now, one little note here that the revalidate option as a route config segment option, when you're exporting it like so inside of your page, it's not available when you're using the edge runtime. This specific option only works if you're using Node.js. And that's another segment option that you can pass in. You might be familiar with. For your runtime, you have the Node.js or a serverless function environment for your pages or server components. You can also deploy to Edge, which runs on the Edge runtime. It's a different uh, environment. Some of these options, like this revalidate, and other stuff are not available on the Edge runtime, so it's good to have this in mind. Now, the third way to opt out of static generation or make a page dynamic is when you're using dynamic functions inside of that page component. Dynamic functions like headers and cookies or anything that's request related. So it needs to run or read something from the request object at runtime. This cannot be generated or pre-rendered at build time. Therefore, it will change or turn your page into a dynamic page. So if I just use the cookies function here from the next header, it is going to have a similar effect as if I was um, setting these options for my fetch function or exporting this route segment config options. Now let's just return a new date to local string here so we don't have any errors. So I instead of cookies, I could have also used the headers and this would have resulted in the same thing because these functions rely on the request object. They need to run at request time, which in turn turns this page into a dynamic page. Now, before we move on to this no store function, which is a new function, still unstable, that allows you to opt out of caching, I just want to mention that all of these options that we talked about or ways that we talked about up until now affect the page layout or the route segment that you're exporting these from. This is different from the no store function where it gives you more granular control over opting out of caching in even a specific component. So let's go to the documentation for this. As I mentioned, it's still um, not stable. So you can export this from next cache and you can use this inside of a component. It doesn't need to be specifically your page component or layout. This is equivalent to passing cache no store to your fetch function, and it is preferred over exporting this dynamic force dynamic option we just talked about because it is going to give you a pair component or a more granular access to opting a specific component out of cache. Now down here, you can also see a usage example. If you prefer not to pass additional options to fetch, like the cache no store or revalidate zero, you could use the no store as a replacement for all of these use cases. So inside of a component, whether or not you're using the fetch API or you're just using your database to query the database, you could just export this no store function from your component. And this in turn would make sure that it that component is opted out of static rendering. So taking this to our code, I could just export this no store down here instead of the headers or cookies. I could have just called the no store function as well. And this would have had the same effect of opting this page out of static rendering. And the fifth way or the last way to opt out of static generation or static rendering is when you're using the search params in a page component. Now, all of your page components or server components inside Next.js are going to receive a search params object. This is the query string inside of your URL. And this, again, is something that's only known at request time. So if you're using the search params object inside of your uh, server components or page components, 
it would again turn that page into a dynamic page because we don't have access to these values at build time. And there you have it. We talked about five different ways to opt out of static rendering in Next.js. We talked about the options you can pass into the fetch function, the cache, no store, and revalidate zero. If you were not using the fetch function, you could also export route config segment options, the dynamic, force dynamic, and also the revalidate zero. We mentioned that revalidate zero or the revalidate option doesn't work on the edge runtime. So keep, it, keep that in mind if you are exporting segment options. Uh, the revalidate specifically doesn't work on the edge runtime. We also talked about dynamic functions, things like the headers and cookies function that depend on the request object. So they need to run at request time. There is no way that you could run this or pre-render this at build time. We also talked about the no store function. This is a new function that's preferred over the other ways of passing options to your fetch function or exporting a config segment option. Because it's more granular, it gives you access to a component level caching or static or opting out of caching behavior. This ties into partial pre-rendering, which we're going to talk about later on on the channel where you pre-render or statically generates your pages, but you have dynamic segments or components inside of these pages that you can just opt out using this no store function. So this kind of ties in into the grand scheme of caching or rendering and partial pre-rendering in Next.js. We're going to talk more about this, but for now know that if you wanted to opt a specific component or a fetch function or a page layout or a route segment, out of static rendering, you can just export or call this no store function inside of that component and um, you can make sure that the result is not cached. And lastly, we talked about the search params. These are again things that are only known at request time. These are the query strings in your URL. So if you are using the search params object inside your page component, it turns it into a dynamic page. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments. If there's any specific topic that you want me to cover, also let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.